So guys, I'm now about to show you the first method which can already fix this for so many people when they have FPS drops here in CS2. And what I want to do in the first place is basically go over here now into settings and type in their console, just simply like that. Make sure the developer console is enabled and that you also know your keybind, which you can find here. For me, I just simply have it here under escape. And once you're in there, you're gonna type in here now FPS max. And this command basically allows it for us now guys to set our maximum FPS exactly at our monitor refresh rate. And for so many people, if they have the FPS actually on uncapped this can cause FPS drops here in CS2. So therefore what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to cap it actually at 360, which is exactly my monitor refresh rate. And this way I basically don't produce too much unnecessary FPS, which I anyways can't utilize. This is just like a quick tip and now let's get into the actual optimization steps. And in the first step guys, we gotta be utilizing Quick Boost version 2.94, which is for full on tweaking software for your Windows PC in order to get the maximum performance out of it. The link to it is in the description. Click on the download X in the first place. And once you get the software itself, this is exactly how it should look like guys and in here now we first of all have general advanced cleanup downloads and windows what we want to focus of course guys is general where we can now enable the exclusive full screen and disable xbox game bar this is super important guys because for so many people the xbox game bar is going to mess around with their games causing you stutter and fps drops so click onto it and it's already fully disabled next up guys we have disabling the startup telemetry which is basically software which is directly installed from windows or microsoft better said which is collecting data off your pc also decreasing its performance for gaming. Next up, disable mouse acceleration. I mean, everyone will play CS anyways and knows this. You gotta disable this one in order to get a more natural mouse input. Next up, disable power saving. This one only makes really sense on a laptop. Other than that, you don't really need it. Disable unnecessarily system services. We're gonna enable this one here as well. And it's just gonna run it real quick in the background and everything is disabled. Remove pre-installed applications. Also gonna click onto it, guys. These are literally like all of these unnecessary ones which come pre-installed with Windows the first time you launch it. No one really uses them. Something like the Windows sound recorder and all of these here and they're fully removed guys. Next up, we also have disable startup programs. We're gonna click onto it and you're gonna make sure that you actually uncheck everything which you don't want to get automatically launched whenever you start your PC. So therefore, once you're done with it, you're gonna close this and we're already good to go with the general tab and go over to advanced. Now here in advanced guys, we have first of all disable power throttling. This one again only makes sense on a laptop other than that, don't bother with it. Next up, we're gonna click under memory tweaks, click under okay real quick. And finally, we're also gonna click under hardware data queue size. This one we're going to enable because this one is going to make sure that we have the least amount of latency for our mouse and keyboard or basically any input device which we connect with our PC. The next step, guys, we're going to go over here to clean up and this one is super useful. You can see clean temporary files, clean all log files, run Windows Clean Manager and clean all temporary data. What you guys can do is just simply click here on the clean all temporary data and everything in your app data, temporary files, everything is going to get clean. So therefore, all of this temporary data which is just simply slowing down your PC is going to be gone. Next up, guys, we're going to go here now over to Windows and once we're in here, we have some additional options for Windows 10 and Windows 11. And what I would recommend you is under Windows settings, disable notifications, disable clipboard history, and disable transparency effect, since these are actually kinda heavy in terms of performance on your Windows PC. So therefore make sure that all of these are disabled if you don't care about it. I don't really care about how my Windows looks like. I just wanna get like my 360 FPS in CS2 and that's all I care about. And then you're already good to go, guys. Then you can close the tool and let's continue with the next step. And this next step now, guys, we're going to take a look at defragment. And this is by far the best tool and also better than the Windows built-in one to make sure to defrag your HDD and optimize your SSD. Depending on which storage type you actually have built into your PC, guys. For me right now here, it's a SSD, so therefore I should only optimize it. If you're running still an HDD, make sure that you defrag it after some time. Both of these options are going to speed up your SSD or HDD, which will overall improve the speed of your system. So for me right now in the first place now, guys, I have a SSD in here under local DC, so therefore I'm only going to click under optimize. As mentioned, if you're on an HDD, you want to defrag it from time to time in order to make sure that you kind of help your HDD to sort out data from Windows directly and the same as well with optimizing your SSD. It's going to help it out so therefore your PC can actually run a lot faster and smoother. In this next step guys, I'm going to show you how you can fully utilize the automotive performance mode on your Windows PC to really squeeze out the maximum performance out of it. If you don't have this option here in your power options, I'm going to share real quick how to enable this. Go into your Windows search bar and type in the CMD, right click onto it and run it as I administrator. Then once the CMD itself is launched guys, you're going to paste in exactly the following comment with the power CFG, which you can find by the way in the video description underneath. Just simply press enter. And once it's applied guys, you're just simply going to type into a window search bar, edit power plan. Then you're going to click under power options and they will now select the automotive performance mode. This is super important. Next up as an additional step, we're going to go under change plan settings and then under change advanced power settings where we now have another small window. And in here now, we first of all guys going to go under processor power management, under minimum processor state, 
and make sure to put this all the way to 100%. Next up as well, guys, we have here the maximum processor stat and this one we're going to put to 100% as well. Super, super important. And finally, the processor performance core parking over utilization we're going to put as well to 100% to avoid it having any park cores on our Windows PC. If you have park cores for some reason, you don't even utilize the full power of your CPU and we definitely want to make sure to utilize its full potential, which is super beneficial for gaming. And then just simply hit apply here real quick and okay and we're already good to go. In this next step, guys, we're gonna go under Steam where we can find out your CSGO, right click onto it and go under properties. And in here now, we're gonna scroll down a little bit where you can find out here the launch options and I'm gonna give you the best launch comments for CS2 in 2023. The first one would be actually frequency and then exactly how much hertz your monitor has. For me, it's right now at 360. Then Novit to actually skip the intro. Console, so it's enabled. Take rate to 128 for local dedicated servers. Now for our maximum FPS, guys, as mentioned in the beginning, for some people, it can be beneficial to actually set it to exactly your refresh rate. So therefore, you're gonna make sure that you don't produce unnecessary pictures, which might already fix FPS drops for a ton of people. Besides that, usually I keep it on zero so that I get a little bit less input delay because if you have even more FPS than your refresh rate, it's usually gonna result in less latency. And for me right now, I love third party software if I wanna utilize OBS, but for you, of course, guys, you can leave this one here out. It's not necessary. And then we're already good to go. And another huge tip which I can give you guys, if you're struggling currently with FPS or 1920 times 1080 or normal native 1080p to actually scale down your resolution a little bit, but still keep your refresh rate as high as you need, guys. And don't do this in CS2 because it's so buggy for some people. And even if you change your hertz in CS2, it's still going to feel like 60 hertz. Rather than that, go into NVIDIA control panel or AMD catalyst. Go here under change resolution. Then you're gonna select 1920 times 1080 and click under customize. Make sure enable resolutions not exposed by the display is checked and click under create custom resolution. We then can create something like 1440 times 1080 and your maximum refresh rate and click under test. And then after that, you get it actually applied here now in your NVIDIA control panel and just simply make sure that you swap over to this resolution here so that you actually change your whole entire monitor aspect ratio to this one and the hertz which you need. And this method is literally gonna work on any PC guys and it's super easy to apply. And as the next step guys, what I want to do is go into your Windows search bar, type in that delete until you can find delete temporary files. Open it up guys and we're gonna search for something very specific. You're gonna click on the temporary files and once it loaded up fully guys, you will see in here now everything which you can basically delete off your PC and what we especially wanna do is the DirectX shader cache. This one and the delivery optimization files, both of these here can actually cause stutter and FPS drops but mainly the DirectX shader cache. Clean up files created by the graphics system which can speed up application load time and improve responsiveness, they will be regenerated as needed. So therefore guys, as long as all of these here are checked, we're gonna click now here under remove files. It's only gonna take a few seconds depending on your system speed. And once you're done with it, you're just simply gonna restart your PC and you're already good to go.